I'm Buff Grubb with Mad River Canoe Company, and right here is the new Expedition 176. Uh, it's one of the two boat series, the Expeditions 186 and 176. These are designed as wilderness tripping canoes, uh, able to carry a lot of gear or passengers, uh, you know, rough weather, distant places to go and travel. Um, wilderness tripping has been core to Med River from the start of the company. Company founder Jim Henry designed his first canoe, the uh, Malasite, out of desire to get a better tripping canoe than what was available on the market. Uh, the expeditions that we make today are definitely the heir apparents to uh, some legendary canoes as the TW Special, the Lamoille, etc. They're very fast, they're skinny, yet they carry a lot of gear, and are, uh, they also make nice day boats too, which is kind of a, a nice thing. Uh, with the expedition series, as you can see, there's plenty of room for a lot of gear. Um, you know, enough space to support a summer long expedition up in the Northwest Territories, or plenty enough room for a, uh, a week in the Boundary Waters weekend in the Adirondacks, etc. Um, one of the nice features about the wood rail version is that it comes standard with the slotted rails which provide easy places to tie in your gear um, and secure it in place. Uh, both the um, Expedition 1 and 76 and the 186 are available in a choice of Gunnel trim, the one we have here is our classic Vermont Ash uh, trim. It's also available in an aluminum rail, which does save some weight, and reduces the uh, uh, the upkeep of it. Wood trim boats have, a, again, northern white ash rails, gunnels, a beach deck, has a contour carry handle. One of the things unique to the Expedition Series is the sliding bow seat, which runs on runners. It's a cane seat. It's a cane bucket. It's tapered here to relieve pressure under the underside of your thighs. But the purpose of the, of the um, sliding seat is to be able to adjust your, your trim of the boat to different paddlers or if you have the good fortune to be up in the bush for two months up in northern Canada for a summer and you're slowly eating your way through all your, your provisions and your weight and your gear changes, you can always adjust the position of where that bow paddler is so you have efficient trim in place. Um, the seat is backed up by a tripping thwart which gives a convenient place to lash in but also provides stiffness to the hull. There's a contoured porty choke, which is cut and dished to create the greatest amount of comfort. There's a secondary tripping thwart back here, and underneath it is a foot brace for the stern paddler. And we finish up in the stern seat is also a cane bucket seat for added comfort and security. One of the most dramatic aspects of the hull design of the Expedition Series is the relatively radical asymmetry of the boat. If you look at the boat at center, you'll see that the widest point of the hull is after behind center and it's narrow in front of center. This makes it very efficient going forward. It makes for a much gentler wedge, if you want to call it that, to part the waves and allow the boat to go forward with less resistance. Um, the other thing to note is that the end of the boat is very fine. So it breaks the water very cleanly. It's very narrow in this area, again, to increase its efficiency. But as you get to the paddling stations, it flares, and the hull at the top has flare to it that repels water off the sides. So when you're in the heavy water, it's, uh, it's quite dry. And if you shoot down the boat, it, you'll see it has the Mad River shallow V bottom, which is very seaworthy. Uh, especially important if you're out in big lakes or big waters and the weather's rough and you've got to make a rendezvous with a float plane or just get home. Um, the Salvi is the most uh, seaworthy hull shape, has the most final stability and it's a great one to have to rely on. Uh, the sides are flat with a slight bit of flare until you get up under the gunnel and then we tuck them into the gunnel to increase the efficiency of the boat, keep the boat narrower, make it more efficient and more comfortable to paddle. There's very little rocker in this boat because, again, these, the Expedition Series is designed to go straight and go fast and get to where it's going. So we don't put a lot of rocker into the boat so that it travels and tends to track very true. The Expedition Series is made of a fairly sophisticated what we call a Kevlar hybrid layup. It's the majority of the fabric that's used in the boat is a Kevlar, but we also use other materials judiciously where they will best serve. For example, underneath the 
red gel coat on the exterior of the hull is a, labor of fi a layer of fiberglass cloth, which is there to basically bond real well to the gel coat, but also to provide abrasion resistance, and it's easy to repair superficial damage and scratches and that kind of thing. Uh, then there's full layers of Kevlar, and then we also place strategic places, uh, uh, strips of graphite. You can see it here, in the, here it's this dark, almost looks green underneath the Kevlar, but it's actually a black material. And that's at the bow and stern, which gives you stiffness and abrasion resistance. And then the heart of the layup is the foam core. And you see here the rib and the elevated diamond in the center. Foam core serves two purposes. It reduces weight, um, foam being lighter than fabric, plus it doesn't absorb the resin. And also it provides stiffness to make for a very efficient uh, uh, hull that doesn't wiggle or move in the water. We provide the Expedition Series in two sizes. This is the 176 and is the shorter of the two. It's 17 and a half foot long. The other is the 186, which is 18 and a half foot long. Uh, the 18 and a half foot has the advantage of greater speed, about the same carrying capacity, but its added length does increase its efficiency, increases its glide. So it's a great boat if you've got long distances to travel or you've got big open water to travel. Uh, the 176 probably comes into favor more in what we call the borderlands tripping, the boundary waters, the Quitico, the Algonquin, the Adirondacks, etc., where you've got a lot of different lakes and all you may not have the huge big open lakes that you may find up north. Um, and so you may not need that extra turn of speed. And you may run into some smaller rivers and that kind of thing, but you may have to do some maneuvering. And the 176 is, is a little bit more nimble than the 186 simply because it has a foot less a hole in the water.